Now, regular viewers of my channel will know that I'm a big fan of classic computer operating systems, and I also find it really interesting and nostalgic to take a trip back and check out these OSs that at one stage completely changed the world. And get to relive those days, or maybe if you weren't around back then, check them out for the first time. But I'll be the first to admit that it can be a royal pain in the backside, trying to maintain old hardware and often just really time consuming, tracking down these operating system images, installing them on real hardware, and sometimes all you want to do is have a quick play in a hassle-free environment without wasting your entire Saturday tracking down drivers and trying to get them to work on their Windows 95, and I do speak from experience. And with the power of today's web browsers and modern hardware, it is actually perfectly possible to run a lot of the classic operating systems from years gone by directly in your web browser. Now, admittedly, not all of them are fully featured and you don't get quite the same experience as running it on real hardware. But if you just want to quickly see what using them was like, then the experience might be enough. So in this video, we'll take a look at 10 classic retro operating systems that today you can run just using your browser. And just before we do that, I wanted to take a quick moment to give a big thank you to my newest sponsor, our amazing friends at PCBWay.com, who've kindly supported today's video. Now, if you're working on an electronics project at the moment and you need a PCB design, you need to check them out. Now, they work with people of all skill levels, from hobbyists to companies, and you might know they're massive supporters of the retro community, and they offer the most professional PCBs for prototyping and low-volume production work anywhere in the world. So please do check them out at PCBWay.com. Number 10, Amiga OS. The Amiga Workbench simulation website is a fantastic project that aims to replicate the look and feel of all versions of the Amiga's operating system as closely as possible. Running entirely in JavaScript, this project began back in 2001 and today is a very close likeness to the Amiga operating system. Now, this isn't fully featured, of course, but it does include versions of many applications you would have found bundled with the Amiga's Workbench. And what I really like about this is that it's even possible to load media files and mods and there are loads of themes that you can select from and you can even get the look and feel of the latest PowerPC Amiga OS 4.1 directly in your web browser. Now this doesn't replace something like WinUAE or any other emulation platform, you're not going to be playing cannon fodder on here, but if you want a quick blast of workbench nostalgia, it's definitely worth a few minutes of your time. Number 9, Windows 3.1 The website Classic Reload is a brilliant project aiming to preserve lots of classic DOS, Windows and console games as well that are all playable directly in your web browser. But using the web-based version of DOSBox, their browser emulation also makes it possible to run entire versions of classic operating systems, including Windows 3.1. Now, Windows 3.1 is very nostalgic for me, as it was the first version of Windows I ever got to use. And here in the UK, that was the version of Windows that really saw the PC start to take over the home market. Now, admittedly, there isn't really much that you can do inside this web-based version of Windows 3.1, as there's no additional software installed. But if you just want to check out what Windows 3.1 was like in its stock configuration, they do include a lot of those default applications in here. So that means that you can spend hours messing around in Paintbrush, maybe write your next novel in 1992's version of Notepad, or just play Solitaire or Minesweeper instead of getting any work done, as we did in offices all across the world back in the early 90s. Great fun. And if you want a more fully featured emulator, check out the version on PCJs.org. On here, you can even insert your own disk images and CD-ROMs. Number 8, Macintosh System 7. System 7 was a landmark release for the classic Mac. Originally released back in 1991, this was actually on the market right through until 1997, and it saw the Mac through some of the most troubled times in its history. 
Now, of course, in the background, Apple were developing the failed Copeland project, which they were hoping would overtake System 7, but unfortunately was unworkable. And then we saw the almost biblical return of Steve Jobs to the company, and the rest is history. But it was also the operating system that saw the transition from the Motorola 68K CPU to the PowerPC. And this actually wasn't received too well by Mac fans at the time, who criticised it for being really memory hungry and a lot slower than the previous version of macOS. But of course, when newer hardware came along, that soon made up for that. And thanks to archive.org, you can try it out for yourself. Now they've put together a minimal System 7.01 install that will run directly in your browser and you can even full screen it to give you a more authentic experience. And they've included a load of applications in here as well. You can check out the classic Mac versions of stuff like you know, Microsoft Word is in here. You've got Microsoft Works and also the Mac's HyperCard system that was used for so much back in the day, including making games like Myst. And speaking of which, they've actually bundled a few classic games in this install as well, and it is a really nice snapshot of what the Mac was like around 30 years ago. Number 7, Windows 95. Now I've done full videos on Windows 95 in recent months, but it is really hard to overstate just what a revolution Windows 95 was at the time of its release. It really did change how we looked at operating systems as, you know, before Windows 95, only real hardcore computer geeks were really interested in the OS. But Windows 95's $300 million marketing campaign meant that we got to see normal people lining up for a midnight release of an operating system and it sold a massive 7 million copies in its first month alone. And the technology in Windows 95 was such a massive change with its totally redesigned shell based around a desktop metaphor, and the file manager from Windows 3 was replaced with Windows Explorer. And of course we saw the famous Start menu for the first time. And in fact many of the ways that we still use computers today began on Windows 95, and in my opinion it really is a timeless design. Now this stock install will run in your browser. Now admittedly, you're not gonna be playing Quake on here, but if you want a basic look back at the Windows 95 stock install that really did change the world, you'll find it all in here. Number six, OS2. OS2 is one of the most interesting operating system projects of all time. Developed from 1987 to 2001, it was initially created as a joint venture between Microsoft and IBM, but the two companies fell out as Microsoft didn't want it positioned as a competitor to Windows. And after 1992, OS2 was exclusively developed by IBM. Now, as anyone who's ever tried to install OS2 in something like VirtualBox will know, it can be a real hassle to get it working. But luckily, there is a JavaScript implementation of OS2 version 1.0 from 1987 that you can run on an emulated 8 MHz IBM PC AT fully set up at the click of a mouse. And as with many machines on PCJ's website, you can also insert additional software via disk images from their menu. Number five, Qnix. Now, Qnix is today owned by BlackBerry, but it actually started life back in the early 80s as a commercial Unix-like real-time operating system intended mainly for the embedded market. But I do remember trying this really impressive demo of Qnix that they released back in the 90s that was totally contained on a single floppy disk. Now it was called the incredible 1.44 megabyte Qnix demo and today you can check it out on the website copy.sh in your web browser. Now what really blew my mind is that it contains a full graphical user interface and it even has internet connectivity a web browser and a few applications all included and bootable just from a single floppy disk. And this was mind-blowing when I checked it out back in the early 90s and probably even more so today. And of course, you can check it out without any installing directly from your browser. Number four, Windows 93. Yeah, you heard that right, Windows 93. 
Now, originally, I was going to put this one in as a bit of a joke, but I actually had such fun exploring this, I'm going to make this a proper item on the list. Now, of course, it's meant to be a spoof on Windows 95 and early internet culture in general, and it's packed with loads of jokes and takes on software of that era. For example, you can check out the classic ASCII version of Star Wars on here. You can relive some classic internet memes. You can even swap out Internet Explorer for Cat Explorer. And of course you can play Half-Life 3 on here. And actually, quite usefully, there is a usable Amiga emulator with plenty of demos and some games installed. Worth exploring for a great nostalgic fix. Number three, the Atari ST. Launched in 1985, the Atari ST was the first personal computer to come with a color graphical user interface out of the box. TOS, which stood for either the operating system or Tramiel operating system after Atari's then president Jack Tramiel, depending on which rumor you believe, was based on Digital Research's GEM platform. And the Atari ST was particularly successful in the world of music production, mainly thanks to its built-in MIDI ports. And the website jamesfriend.com has got a really nice basic TOS install set up using the PCE emulator and running TOS version 1.0. And in here, you can check out the ST's desktop in all of its green glory. And they've also bundled various applications and programming languages in here as well, including the classic ST Basic. There's a version of Logo in here as well and the very feature-packed for the day, Neochrome Paint Package. Number two, Windows 1.0. Ever wondered where it all started for Windows back in the day? Well, another great virtual machine on the PCJ's website is an install of Windows 1.0, including the beta or the premier edition, as it was known, that wasn't actually released, but was sent to vendors, developers and the press in summer of 1985 to get feedback on Microsoft's new platform. And you can explore this very earliest version of Windows and the later public release version 1.01 in all of its primary colour gory glory, running on an emulated EGA display. And here you can check out the roots of so many programs that still exist in Windows to this day. Now interestingly, the earliest versions of Windows weren't actually received all that well, with many critical reviews at the time claiming that it was really confusing to use and that it didn't teach the user well enough how to use the newfangled mouse controller how we've come on. And number one, MUOS. Now finally, if you want something to really distract you from getting any work done, MUOS is a web-based archive of many classic games and applications that are all launchable directly from its Windows 98 style desktop. And there are loads of things you can try out on here, including many of the classic id software shooters, all set up and they actually play really nicely in a browser on a modern machine. You've got arcade titles on here as well. Adventure games. Simulators. It's actually really cool that you can play these windowed or set them to be full screen. And if you want that really authentic retro experience, there is even a Windows 98 virtual machine installed and all set up to go. And you might even see a few old friends on the MUOS desktop from time to time. So there you go, that's 10 retro operating systems that you can run with no setup, no hassle in your web browser in 2021. 
And I'm actually always on the lookout for any more. So if you're aware of any other projects, please do link them up in the video comments. And I might even do a second part of this video in the future if I get enough recommendations. And if you've enjoyed this video, a quick heads up that I also do a weekly retro gaming and computing podcast that you can find by opening your favorite podcast client and searching for The Retro Hour, or you can get it directly from our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, another couple of videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.